Hello, I'm Patrick Mortfort. And I'm Dave Ferraro. And this week on the Comics and More podcast, we're going to be talking about um, three new Marvel Now books. Again. <laughs> right. So um, Marvel has been like kind of slowly but steadily like releasing these relaunches of the books um, with pretty top tier creative talent. Um, they're kind of slowly rolling it out over a couple months. Um, and this week we had um, a new Captain America indestructible hulk and a um new creative team shift on journey into mystery although that one kept its numbering as it was um so first i guess we're going to talk about captain america cool so this is the cover to the brand new captain america number one uh really nice cover there by uh the new creative team uh the uh the art is by john ramita jr uh, with inking by Klaus Janssen and colors by Dean White. So a really terrific uh, artistic lineup here uh, for the new Captain America. And it is written by Rick Remender, who mm -hmm. we've talked a lot about on the show. Uh, he is also writing the new Uncanny Avengers title. Mm -hmm. um, so this first issue of Captain America uh, is really a complete departure from what had been done with the character under Ed Brubaker's run. Mm -hmm. uh, most of which I have not read, but I've read some of it, and I've read other comics by Brubaker, and I gather that was sort of a more, um, it's weird to say a, a more realistic take, but it was a, a bit more down-to-earth, kind of espionage-oriented yeah. uh, series. Uh, whereas Remender and Ramita's Captain America takes its inspiration directly from Jack Kirby's work with the character during the 1970s. Uh, that was a, a, a really interesting run on the book that was not very highly regarded at the time. Uh, Kirby's style uh, had sort of become uh, out of step with what uh, was kind of the mainstream style at the time so I don't think people really appreciated it at the time although as with a lot of the work that Kirby did for both Marvel and DC during that period it seems to have sort of come back into vogue mm -hmm. um, and people are kind of taking another look at that that 70s material which I think is just fantastic I love Kirby's run on Captain America from the 1970s um, so I think it's really cool that uh, Remender is looking towards that for inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, so the story here uh, finds Captain America essentially kidnapped by Arnim Zola, a really great villain that Kirby introduced during that era, and taken to uh, somewhere that they call, I think, Dimension Z. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if this is really another dimension or if it's just some kind of like an underground city or something like that. Uh, so it's this weird place um, where Arnim Zola is doing all of these uh, bizarre experiments. And um, he kidnaps Captain America and is experimenting on Captain America. There's also an infant there who is being experimented on as well. We don't really know exactly the nature of what Arnim Zola is doing mm -hmm. with Captain America and this baby, but there are, there's a lot of hints of it. Yeah, and he's taking blood from Captain America yeah. too. So. so you can kind of assume what might be going on here, but you know, I'm sure the details will play out yeah. over this first storyline. Um, but yeah, so essentially uh, Captain America is kidnapped by Arnim Zola, taken to Dimension Z. He escapes, and then we find out at the end of the issue, it seems as though the infant had been killed, but Captain America, in fact, has rescued the infant and now has this child in his care, and he's on his own in Dimension Z against the forces of Arnim Zola. And that's this first issue. Mm -hmm. And um, so it is very much, I thought, in, in the story, in the tone, in even the look of it with Ramita's artwork, um, which looks phenomenal here, mm -hmm. um, it really does evoke the Jack Kirby run from the 1970s. Um, and I, I think I probably would have made that connection even had Remender not explicitly said, these are the comic books that I'm looking at, yeah. this is what I'm trying to capture in my run on the book. It's very a very direct homage to those issues. But I think it reads completely modern. It's not retro at all. Um, so I think this is going to be a really fun book. Mm -hmm. uh, this this first issue was, was a lot of fun to read. I mean, 
Uh, this is kind of how I like superhero comics. I, I like them to have big ideas and a lot of action, you know, and, and not be afraid to, to throw in, you know, kind of characters who are just on the edge of being a little goofy, like Arnim Zola and Dimension Z. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. Um, I've, I've long been a fan of uh, John Romita Jr., I think he's one of the best artists working in the mainstream. I think he has been for a long time now. Um, and I, I think I said, too, in, in our review of Avengers vs. X-Men, he's really good at drawing superheroes who are beat up. He really does beat up superheroes really well. And they really put Captain America through his paces here. So you've got a really kind of, like, rough-looking character, you know, because Captain America, he's not Superman, you know. I mean, he can take a bullet and you know, um, he'll he'll get roughed up a little bit. And, mm -hmm. and Ramita draws that really well. And we know from uh, Uncanny X-Force that Rick Remender really enjoys uh, inflicting a lot of physical and emotional uh, pain onto the characters that he writes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going to be a rough ride, I think, for Captain America, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun for the readers. Um, I also, uh, Klaus Janssen, of course, great inker, um, you know, kind of almost legendary in the industry at this point. And uh, Dean White, uh, who I've uh, sung his praises before too, again, um, came to my attention on Uncanny X-Force along mm -hmm. with Rick Remender. And it's White's uh, coloring, which really kind of held that book together artistically, despite a, a shifting team of pencilers and inkers. Yeah. Uh, Dean White really created a coherent look for that book. I've not seen him work, I don't think, with Romita before, and they're a really interesting combination, because uh, Romita has, is very, very stylized. You know, he doesn't, mm -hmm. he's not necessarily like a realistic artist, um, but um, his stuff just looks terrific, and, and uh, in combination with Dean White's kind of painterly, very textured coloring, um, it creates a really neat look with, of course, Klaus Janssen's uh, beautiful inking on top of it. So this, to me, was just kind of a really solidly crafted comic book, and I just think it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, all the ingredients are there for this to be a fantastic series. Uh, my friend recommended this to me before I had read it. I intended to read it anyway, but I was like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's Marvel's best writer, uh, Marvel's best artist, um, and inspired by one of the great runs of comics, Jack Kirby's 1970s work with Captain America. So it's, it seemed like it was a can't miss, and I, I think they completely hit the mark in this first issue. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. Yep, this is, I think, easily one of the strongest Marvel Now launches. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, this week it's the strongest. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Rick Remender, I was very excited to see come on. Like, pretty much anything Rick Remender is doing, I'm going to be excited to read. Yeah, he's just very good yeah. at crafting stories. Mm -hmm. He comes up with cool plots, mm -hmm. cool ideas, and uh, they always play out in really interesting ways. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of came out of nowhere, you know what I mean? He had just these kind of like smaller books through Marvel and you know, you know, Marvel like like you've said before, they, they do a really good job of like grooming these really creative people. Um, and, they, and then they put them on their big books and you know, they kind of explode. You know what I mean? Yeah. And here you can really let's see him like you know, running, running with it. Yeah, really and it. and Remender's just a really good writer. He's mm -hmm. very witty. Yeah. Um. You know. Um. Yeah. I love the banter between him. And, yeah. It's um, very. Sharon. You know. It's very well. You notice when like dialogue mm -hmm. is artfully done mm -hmm. in a comic book. You, you. It does stand out. Yep. Um. There's that that one point where they're going to board this subway train that will. Um, unbeknownst to him, uh, take Captain America to Dimension Z uh, mm -hmm. against his will. But they're in, they're they're about to board this subway car, and um, as they are making their way to it, Captain America and Sharon Carter, his girlfriend, mm -hmm. Shield agent, um, is saying that because um, she had proposed, I guess, to, mm -hmm. to Steve Rogers, <laughs> and she does. said, "I I want to spend my life with." Steve, I'm not asking you to give up being a superhero, but I want to spend my life with Steve Rogers, not with Captain America. And then the next line of dialogue is, there's only room for one. And it was the conductor of the subway saying that. Yeah. Right? But putting that there... Was, yeah, I didn't catch that either. It was very good. artfully <laughs> done. It was very nice, nicely done. You yeah. know, it's not... 
It doesn't sound like much, but those little touches just show that, you know, Remender really knows his way around dialogue. Yeah. He really knows his way around these characters. He knows how to put these pages together. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's 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 one of these kind of comics that you kind of read and it's just like, it doesn't seem that hard to do. There should just be a bunch of comics like this. But, yeah. um there aren't that many, but I, I think this is going to be fun. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that they really, really try to keep Ramita on this book and not have too many fill-ins. That's just always an anxiety I have with these Marvel comics because I think they want to pump them out so quickly. And I really think there are a few books that you really want the main artist to draw at least most of the issues. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope that um, they're able to do that with John Ramita Jr. Yeah. in this book. All right, let's move on to the next book. Uh, this one is Journey into Mystery. Um, and this is issue uh, 646. Uh, previous to this, um, Kieran Gillen had been writing um, a long story arc with um, Kid Loki mm -hmm. that a lot of people seem to like. Yeah, another pretty acclaimed run. Yeah. Um, so um, Catherine Amonin and um, Valerio Shidi um, take over this issue, and they change directions with us and focus on a different character, um, the Lady Sif, who people probably know from the movie and from being a supporting character in, you know, Thor's comics over the years. Um, she's a very, you know, she's like a warrior, um, goddess type mm -hmm. character. Um, she like holds her own like with the guys. Um, and in this issue, well, I just also want to say Marvel, you know, props for putting a female um, writer um, on this book starring another female character because I know DC got a lot of flack, you know, with the 52 with a lack of a female presence. So I'm glad that Marvel's at least like keeping that in mind. And they're doing a lot of stuff like that with like, you know, the Captain Marvel book and, um, you know, having She-Hulk take over like one of the Hulk books too, you know, they're kind of yeah, trying to Yeah, and it's not the just characters. women writing female characters because yeah. um, I know there a, a woman is taking over the writing on um, Avengers Assemble. Mm -hmm. Yep. Kelly Sue DeConnick. Yeah, I think that's right. And she's who's writing Captain Marvel right now, too. Right. <clears throat> so um, Lady Sif gets, you know, center stage in this one. And basically it kind of seems like the story is um, Lady Sif saves this kid from a library that's burning down. And there's, like, this lost knowledge that, that they kind of, like, go with um, with the library going down. Um, and Lady Sif starts to talk to people and kind of think about, like, this... Um, that the warriors like nowadays aren't like they used to be and i guess there's some kind of like hints at like there there's this like kind of hidden knowledge and hidden way of fighting and stuff like that from before and she wants to find out what happened to these warriors before um to be honest the storytelling was kind of choppy i felt like mm -hmm. i couldn't follow it completely mm -hmm. um did you you felt the same way yeah i did i have I wasn't completely sure. I wasn't sure completely lost, what was but going on. it was just like choppy. It seemed like very like, like the scene shifted like very quickly, mm -hmm. and you didn't get full explanations necessarily. It felt like like it was just suddenly like at the next scene like where she was. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a little hard to follow, um, and it seems like I don't know Catherine Amon like she has these like slow moments like it like in like in scenes. But then just all of a sudden it's very fast paced and somewhere else and then you're shifted again and it's another slow moment. It just seems like her pacing is just very odd. Contrast that to the way that Remender is. Yeah, which is very stories. slick. Yeah. yeah. Like it's just like I think she, I think Catherine Monin just needs like a stronger editorial hand to really like, you know, kind of get these stories across. Mm. Um one thing I will say though is I really like the art. Like I don't know if you enjoyed the art at all, but I actually really like the art in this book. Um, and I know I've seen this artist on something before, but um, I really like how they draw creatures. I like how they draw um, characters. Um, Sheedy is the artist. I don't recall what book they've written before, but I really enjoyed the art in this one. Um, and I have read other things by Catherine and when I read her um, Patsy Walker Hellcat book. And that one started out with a lot of promise. Like it was like very witty, um, very clear, but then that kind of like got messy too. Hmm. So I just feel like Catherine Amon and she just, I feel like there's a lot of potential here. Like it, se it seems like there's a lot of cool ideas. Like, a, like there's this cool villain like introduced later. I like like the dragon that's, that's kind of like having some banter with Sif. But yeah, there's a lot in here. Yeah, there is a lot it's in here. The most dense, cool ideas. Dense of all the books. But yeah, it was just difficult to figure out what was going on. And it's just like, 
it's just yeah just like i said before the pacing was just very choppy mm -hmm. um so unfortunately i didn't like this one you know very much i probably won't follow it again mm -hmm. but um i will say i did like the art and i do like lady sif as a character um maybe Catherine Amon will kind of hold, hone her skills as the series goes along but as is this is one of the marvel now books i'm just not going to keep following mm -hmm unfortunately yeah i didn't really like this one either um i didn't really want to read it uh yeah. <laughs> i just um, okay um but i had to for this episode so that was part of what i was bringing to it is i just kind of want I, I just was uninterested it in didn't it. benefit my low expectations and that's um no it didn't and that and you know that's i mean that's kind of on me in that i'm just not i've never really been particularly interested in the Thor corner of the Marvel Universe. Yeah. I love Jack Kirby's run on Thor. I mean, I mm -hmm. think that's one of the best Kirby books. Um, we should know Kirby created all of the characters here that yeah. these books are yep. are about. But, um, uh, yeah, it's just be, beyond the Kirby run. I, I just... I, I'm not as interested in Thor and his supporting cast as I am in the rest of the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any kind of, you know affection that I'm coming to the book with, especially when you get to characters like Sif, yeah. who I just really have... I mean, I, again, I liked her in Kirby's Around Thor, but I really have no interest in her as a character at mm -hmm. all. I mean, I don't really know much about her. Um, so I, I didn't have that kind of, like, fanish interest that I was bringing to it. Um, and... Um, you know, yeah, it was a little clear. I think you're right. It was a little kind of choppy, like the mm -hmm. pacing of it. Um, none of that was was terrible, but it was also yeah. it wasn't good enough to engage me with a character that I was not already interested in. Mm -hmm. You know, like I think if you really like Sif, um, or you're just really into all the Asgard stuff, um, I think this is good enough that you'll probably get something out of it and the story may turn into something more interesting but as it is this first issue it, it just didn't really offer any cool particularly cool moments or suggest a story that I was going to be really engaged in mm. Sif as a character did not really um you don't really know across. who she is that much yeah. yeah I mean they really they they tried to really kind of yeah. establish her as a character as this warrior um, they had a nice, you know, scene in there between her and um, the wife of one of the Warriors Three, mm -hmm. um, but it just it, it just kind of sat there on the page. It did not really engage me very much. And you know, again, I'm I'm admitting like I I don't particularly care about Sif. Maybe mm -hmm. I would have been more forgiving if it was like about a character that I was more interested in, but. I mean, it is what it is. I just, I just wasn't really engaged with that. Um, Hedy's art was was nice, but I, I kind of, it didn't really thrill me. Mm. You know what I mean? I mean, it was, it was nicely illustrated, but it's, it's not like, oh, well, the story is okay, but this was great art. Yeah. I like to the me, art. The lot. art kind of fit the story. It was like, I don't know. Honestly, it kind of read like a DC book. It was a little, a little generic in style and. Tone, whereas a lot of my favorite Marvel stuff has really bold, uh, artistic, uh, you know, kind of look to it. You know, it's really like uh, like John Romita Jr. or like Chris Bacciolo on Wolverine and the X Men. Mm -hmm. You know, um, someone just has they they have a really particular kind of visual stamp they put on the book. This seemed kind of like more of a generic art style. Um, mm. So it even yeah. that didn't really. It was just. Yeah, it was just kind of dull. I mean, I guess I, I kind of feel the same way as I do about, like, Red She-Hulk that we reviewed yeah. for the Marvel Now. Like, I just... Although, there's more ideas here. Which yeah. With Red She-Hulk, you're like, well, what's what's the idea? How do they think this is going to be a series? Yeah. There's a lot of ideas here. Yeah, and it seems like Catherine Amon is trying to build, like, a mythology in Asgard. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's true. So, so I like that she's, like, attempting to try to do something yeah, here. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not, you know... A, a lazy book it's not that there's not an idea it's just that i think the ideas as they're presented just didn't engage me personally mm -hmm. so I, I i have to agree i don't i didn't really care for this i didn't really have fun reading it um so i have to kind of give it a negative review yeah um yeah hopefully you know maybe you know it'll turn around and i'll pick up the trade you know yeah I mean, um, you know but I like the art a lot. He didn't like the art, but either way, it sounds like it's kind of a miss, so...
with so many books out there, yeah, you can probably skip uh, Journey into Mystery. Yeah. Unless you really like the Asgardians and, and just mm -hmm. can't get enough of them. Yeah, and I really like the new Thor book. The new Thor Yeah, books. the new Thor was very good. Um, but that had a very distinct visual yes, look to it. It did. But and, it, and it wasn't a it wasn't the most creative story, yeah. but it was elegantly told across mm -hmm. the three time periods and um it had a, a, a unique tone to it. Yeah. There was a, a kind of a tone to that book of, of like kind of a fun, kind of burly kind of adventure story. Yeah. Um, and this was just kind of flat, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, also, like in Thor, I felt like the the language was handled better. Like uh, it seemed, to yeah, float. I kind of thought that too. Yeah, it was a little clunky. Yeah. It stood out as being like you know faux, you know Shakespearean. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and it should and it, be faux Shakespearean. Yeah, but I mean, it just blended in more with Thor. Mm -hmm. Like here, it really stood out as being kind of awkward. Yeah, it's a difficult. It's a difficult yeah. uh, kind of style of writing to mm. master because um you know it's not it's not shakespearean language and, yeah. and why yeah. would it be but yet it is this kind of faux shakespearean that i mean the master of it is stan lee mm -hmm. who created it uh and uh he he just uh it rolls just out of his his pen but um you know different different writers have been able to tackle it to, yeah. to varying degrees and yeah i think they did do it better in uh, Thor God of Thunder than yep. they did here in Journey into Mystery. So, yeah, I, I kind of feel like one Thor book is is maybe good mm -hmm. for the Marvel universe. Like, I don't know, one, like like Kid well, Loki, Loki, like you know what I mean? Like people, people, people like the Loki book. Yeah, yeah. and it, and like that had a voice. I felt like it was doing something very different from Thor. Right. This seems like it's doing Thor, but it's like Thor light a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like here's the female Thor. Right. You know what I mean? But, I mean, she is trying to do something with the mythology and stuff, so I don't think it's a complete throwaway book, but... And I well, like the art, but... And the female characters at Marvel just maybe aren't as interesting as male characters, you know? Well, so I think you can make any character you can, interesting and if they're doing it correctly. they're trying to do that, yeah. but I, I don't think Marvel has as, as, as deep of a bench as far as great yeah. female characters. Yeah. Um, but you're right, they can do good things with, with any character. Well, uh, speaking of characters and... and Oh, there's no segue there. Never mind. Um, <laughs> You're just going to talk about the next book. Um, and that is The Indestructible Hulk, number one. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a lovely cover there by Lionel Francis Yu, who is the new artist on this book. And the new writer is Mark Wade, mm -hmm. uh, who, of course, has gotten a lot of acclaim for his run on Daredevil, which mm -hmm. is continuing unaffected into the Marvel Now era. They're just going to keep Daredevil going, which is another thing that Marvel, I think, is doing right with their not really a relaunch as opposed mm -hmm. to like DC's New 52. Yeah. It's like, hey, if something's working, we're yeah. not going to make you relaunch yeah, it. Daredevil, Wolverine, and X-Men. Yeah, those yeah. are great books. Just keep doing what you're doing. Um, but it was a good chance to refresh the Hulk. Mm -hmm. um, so Indestructible Hulk number one. Um, okay, so this issue was kind of like Mark Wade's first issue of Daredevil in that it was kind of like Mark Wade's pitch for the Indestructible Hulk illustrated. So it's the you know the the story is is basically like Mark Wade's idea for the book. Okay. So so the Hulk literally approaches Shield in the person of Maria Hill, mm -hmm. and um, Shield has been hunting the Hulk, haven't been able to find him. So Bruce Banner shows up um, and makes this proposal to uh, Maria Hill, um, and he says that he wants to kind of he's had an epiphany. Mm -hmm. And he wants to um, use his both use his time as Bruce Banner more efficiently, mm -hmm. uh, meaning you know work on solving the the world's problems in the way that Tony Stark and Reed Richards do. He he feels he is you know as intelligent and capable as the the great scientists of the Marvel universe but he's mm -hmm. not really seen that way. So he wants to put his his scientific mind to better use. Um but he's also come to terms with the fact that he is not going to cure himself of being the Hulk. Um he is going to be the Hulk forever and he is going to Hulk out occasionally. Mm -hmm. Um so the second part of his proposal is like given that that's a reality, uh I want you guys shield to har help me harness that energy and point me in a useful direction you know like help me to use the hulk f as a force for good while i'm the hulk and then while i'm bruce banner 
you know, I will be um, working on these scientific problems. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like he it wants like to idea. finance them too, like yeah, you know, give he, him a lab he, and he's stuff. He's basically so. applying for a job at yep. Shield and, and being like, look, this is how it would work as I see it. Yep. And of course, you know, as he's explained this to Maria Hill, there's this thing going on with um, the Mad Thinker. So there's a big fight with the Mad Thinker. And of course, the Hulk helps Shield out. So they're like, you're hired essentially, so mm -hmm. that's essentially this first issue. Mm -hmm. So that that the premise um, is it does sound like it sounds pretty logical, like mm -hmm. what the Hulk came up with. Um, it's like okay, yeah, that's cool, and it seems like it could make Heffer kind of a cool uh, premise for the series. Mm -hmm. um, Lionel Yu's artwork looked good here. I've I've liked his his art in the past. Um, it, it didn't necessarily thrill me, but there's some really nice looking pages. Yeah, in here. I like. I think I think all three of them had a really good art this week. I know you didn't really like the the art on Journey into Mystery, but I thought all three of them were great artists for the mm. books that they were that they were with. Yeah, um, yeah, I think that's that's accurate. Um, so my my problem with this issue was my same issue with the first issue of Daredevil mm -hmm. is that. I don't like these initial issues that Mark Wade does, and I, I'd have to read more of his stuff to see if this is really a pattern with him, but I remember I had this reaction to Daredevil. It's, you know, I wish he had come up with a more kind of elegant way to move us into this new status quo, rather than just literally having two characters sit down and say, this is who I am this is what the series is going to be about. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and Bruce Maddox is having this epiphany for no particular reason. He didn't really find an elegant way to really tie that into Avengers versus X-Men, as far as I remember. It's just he'd kind of been off on his own thinking, and he just had this idea, kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, Mark Wade had this idea for Indestructible Hulk. So um, I just, I, I, I'd rather be thrown into the midst of the action. I'd rather have... You know, like, like, uh, like uh, you know, Remender's Captain America. That is... a as clear of a statement as to what this book is going to be about without having to spell it out in dialogue so mm -hmm. you know unimaginatively yeah. um but like with daredevil which grew has really grown on me since those initial issues and become one of my favorite books mm -hmm. um i think wade's strength is in crafting stories and um just coming up with really well plotted adventures to put these heroes into and and just really like drum tight you know plots mm -hmm. and um that's really you know the 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 month to month issue to issue kind of crafting of the story is what i think mark wade really excels in uh because he's not really a high concept guy mm -hmm. there's not like like you know the the you know the situation that Hulk describes here that he wants to set up with S.H.I.E.L.D. is, it's a good idea. It seems more like kind of the next kind of logical step for the Hulk rather than this radical idea that Mark Wade has come in with. Yeah. So he's not really a high concept guy. He really kind of like deals with the classic kind of versions of characters mm -hmm. and his strength is in, you know, the storytelling. So I think that's why maybe these first issues aren't as, as thrilling to me um, but I, I do look forward to reading more of it and seeing what kind of stories he comes up with. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great summary. Did I, did I, did <laughs> yeah, I, you, like, nailed that one, I, I feel nailed like. it, nothing more to add. Yeah. But do you agree with me about the... Did you think that in the it, first issue? It was a lot of sitting just, down and being like, well, I mean, that's all he did. It was, he, he was like, yeah. I want to be I want to be in S.H.I.E.L.D. because of this, this, and this. You yes. know, it was him talking to me Maria and while, this is the while kind she's of, looking at the clock because right. there's a rate of mad thing. And this is the kind of person I am, and mm -hmm. this is the kind of person I want to be. It's mm -hmm. just like, I feel like those words were in Mark Wade's yeah. pitch, you know? <laughs> so and so I wish he, I almost, I should just skip to issue two or something. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool idea having Hulk as, you know, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's it like all Hulk sounds agent good to me. I would have approved the pitch for a series too, but yeah. I just don't feel like, I, I wish I didn't have to read it so explicitly yeah. in this first issue. So. Yeah. So, um, but uh, I, 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 you know, I did enjoy it, and I think I'm going to enjoy it more going forward. So mm -hmm. it's it's smart of Marvel to put Wade on another book, because um, Daredevil has, has got so much acclaim. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it sells that well, but it, it won a lot of awards. Um, so that's really kind of become a critical kind of favorite. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if uh, he can build up a similar kind of, uh, you know, run on, on Indestructible Hulk. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. All right. right. So yeah. So clear winner this week was um, Captain America number one. Yep. Really good yep. on all levels, art and story. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, also, Iron Man number two was was released already. Yep. Uh, we just reviewed the first issue of that book. And uh, like the first issue, I enjoyed the second issue too. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a nice done in one story. Yep. And, um, you know, they're they're rocking along with that. I still kind of wish somebody else was drawing that book. So yeah, Greg really Land's art wasn't as, art wasn't as jarring, I felt like, this time. Like, maybe yeah. I was used to it from reading the first issue. I've but... accepted that Greg Land is drawing the book. <laughs> um, and yeah. the, there was a little interesting editorial, too, from Kieran Gillen in the back of the book talking about how this is the first series that he's done, or at least that he's done in a while, where he doesn't have it all planned out, like, from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. Like he said, in Journey into Mystery, like, he knew how it would end when he started. It was all yep. very, very carefully plotted out, which doesn't surprise me that Gillen takes that approach. What little I've read of his work, mm -hmm. it does always seem very, very cleanly structured. Mm -hmm. um, so he said in, in this uh, run with Iron Man, he's just going to kind of see what happens. So I think that should be interesting, too. Cool. Okay, Sounds cool. Sounds good. All right, well, we'll probably do at least one more Marvel Now episode. Yep. Um, yeah, we still have some good books coming up from them. We have the FF is coming out. Oh, right. Um, we have a couple more X-Men books. A couple of Avengers books, books right? some more X-Men stuff, so we'll so, see. Yep, good stuff coming up. All right, thank you for tuning in this week, and we will see you later.